gotta get gas. What is up, everyone? Vu with Envu Films again. And today is an interesting day. Not really, but um, I gotta go to a wedding venue today to do a walkthrough. Um, this venue requires all vendors to do a walkthrough and uh, it's kind of unnecessary because I've actually filmed a wedding at this venue before last year and uh, but it's required and I have to be professional so I have to go so that is what I'm doing today it's kind of a bummer because it's like an hour away but you know it's a beautiful day out. It's gonna give me a chance to get away from what I was doing inside the house, which was counting work. And uh, you know, that's that's as boring as it sounds, but you know, you gotta do what you gotta do, right? But as you may have heard earlier, I mentioned the cars out of gas, so I gotta stop by this gas station and give my car this 93 octane it deserves. Or I deserve, because it's gonna leave me stranded on the road if I don't, so. Well, there goes my $40. It's probably nothing more boring than watching me drive and talk. Um, probably doesn't help the fact that I have like this ridiculous allergy or cold or whatever is going on with me. So I got the sniffles and I probably got like boogers all up my nose. I left a little early, so I think I make a quick detour, get some, get my car, a little bit of a car wash. It's dirty as hell. Downside of driving modified cars over these speed bumps. I'm gonna go with this flagship car wash action. With my lazy, my lazy ass, I'm not gonna get out. I mean, plus I don't have time. I'm gonna do this, this touchless, auto automatic wash action. The downside, you know, you try to be stylish. So you've been wearing tight pants. I don't. I'm not wearing skinny jeans, but the pants are slim fit. They're pretty damn tight. Can't get my wallet out of my damn pocket. Hello, welcome to flagship. Please add payment for your selection. Would please wait while your card is being authorized. Thank you. You have purchased the ultimate wash, our best wash. You may enter the wash when it is ready. And you may shut up when you're ready. I always like to drive through this part real slow to get as much spray as possible. Get my money's worth. Twelve dollar watch. That crap's done. Hopefully, that uh, car wash was okay. I mean, it was only 12 bucks. Generally speaking, it's all right, but you know, it doesn't really get all like the crap off the car. But at least my car doesn't look like some straight trash that it had looked like the past two weeks. You know, we had that huge blizzard here last week. You know, the one that got like two inches of snow. Make and a U-turn. They put like a buttload of buttload of salt 
on the uh, the roads, and obviously, you know, that crap sprays all over the damn car. You are on the best you know? route despite the usual up. traffic. You should reach your destination by 5.02 p.m. But I'll use this opportunity to just chit chat on my good old camera here to so keep myself from being bored and to bore you, mile, um, you unfortunate soul that came across my channel. So, you know, I don't know what to talk to you about today, but maybe some random things, some pet peeves I have as a wedding videographer. Um, you know, and this would be slightly different than the pet peeve of a photographer the because the pet peeves of a videographer will probably include a photographer. But, I mean, look, photographers are awesome. I love working with photographers. I like photography myself. I'm not particularly good at it, mainly because I don't really know how to edit that well on Photoshop and all those kind of things. But in a quarter you know, I think I have my camera set up both decent and I know how to do all that kind of stuff. But anyway, some of the my biggest pet peeves as a videographer as that I've came across with you know throughout my couple years of doing wedding videos is some photographers don't have like the best etiquette and I'm pretty sure a lot of videographers don't either but, okay let's generally speaking videographers and photographers we probably both have the same gripes towards each other and it really depends on the individual you know some photographers some videographers are just not really good to work with and and I, and I hope I'm a, I'm a decent videographer for a photographer to work with on the day of a, uh, a wedding. But I have worked with some photographers that don't know what a zoom lens is. Like, they have to be all up close, all up on the action. And I understand that they're trying to get a shot. Like, you know, you get a different type of shot with like a prime, you know, with wide open aperture like really up close to the couple's face and they're trying to get this really artistic shot which is perfectly fine because you know especially during like photo shoots you know those are planned shots and you know as a videographer i like to sneak in there and get some myself which is all good and you know we're working together but there was one particular photographer i worked with and this person was very into getting certain shots and you know it's all well and good but he was very self selfish about it. Um, didn't really care for what I was trying to do, what I was trying to deliver for the client, and he really didn't really care much about anything other than himself just getting these glamorous shots for his portfolio. Because during the ceremony, this guy was like a vulture around the bride and groom. He was he was circling around them like. He was, you know, a NASCAR driver doing laps, you know, just straight circling around the, um, the bride and groom. And that caused a lot of issues for me because as a solo shooter, I have like a tripod on there. And I'm, you know, I'm trying to film like the reaction of their faces as they're making their vows. And I keep having this guy come like across the camera view. And, you know, I don't know exactly what kind of shots he's getting. Oh, he had to get really in there when they're doing the rings, like blocking my shot, blocking the view for like the guests, what they want. Like, I mean, you know, I think there's a time and place for getting your glamour shots. And that time is during the photo session, the photo shoot, but not during the ceremony. You know, you gotta let things play out. Um, same thing with like, you know, first look, you know. During the first look, the bride and groom, you know, they get to see each other for the first time. It's usually pretty dramatic. A lot of times they both cry, they say things. The worst thing to do is to stop them from reacting naturally and stopping them from just going through the motion of the first look. You know, I've had some photographers like literally stop the bride from walking. You know, when she's walking out, the groom is waiting and say, stop and then, be, you know, tap the shoulder for him to turn around, stop. And he has stopped every time. And I feel like a lot of those type of shots, you can get that, you know, just have them act it out again a second time with the, you know, to get it, to get that shot. But in terms of like the first, the actual first look, just let it happen naturally. Just let it, let the bride and groom do their thing. And if you need to like retake some shots, you can just stage it. Like you stage everything else. You know, you can stage, their, they're getting their tie put on. You can stage their, shoes put on makeup put on all that stuff you could do you know but sometimes you gotta let things just happen naturally and that's one of my big pet peeves where 
photographers and videographers, you know, they try to get control of everything. And I'm not a, against stage shots. I do it myself. I'm not against getting like artistic, the most glamorous shots. And I, I like doing that myself. There's just a time and place for that. And when things are trying to happen Can naturally, for ceremony, first look, or things of the nature, I think, you know, the guys let it go. Um, another thing that is kind of a downer with some photographers, photographers, they're, they're, they're known as the main, you know, media person. They're, they're always, you know, videographers always the last, usually if couples have enough money, you know, their budget lets it happen, they'll get a videographer, but we are not always necessities. Photographers is always necessity. You have to have a photographer at a wedding. You, videographers, we unfortunately are not at that point where it's like, we are must have at a wedding. But, you know, and a lot of times the photographer is the one that comes up with their, their daily timeline, when their photo session is, and that's when videographers come in. And I always request the couple for at least five, 10 minutes where I could have my time to direct the couple. Most of the time the photographer's directing the couple to, to get like their their glam, glamour shots, their, their their stage shots and like all those things, which is great. And you know, and I, and I piggyback off them. I get shots while, you know, as the couples are kissing, when the photographers tell them to kiss for like a kiss photo, I get the video as they're about to kiss and it, you know, makes for a very nice video. But I usually, I request five to 10 minutes and it's usually on the timeline that the videographer gets five to 10 minutes to, to, to direct the couple to, to, you know, do certain things, you know, do certain cinematic things, hold hands, whatever. And the photographer, a lot of times just ignore the time, even when I remind them they kind of run over that time because they're trying to get their 3,000th shot of the day. You know, they're trying to get as many shots as they can. And it's unfortunate because they ran over my time. And the reason why, another thing I do as a videographer is I offer unlimited time that the wedding day. So if it's a wedding, I'll, I'll, I will film for the couple the whole day. I don't have time for that. I don't have time. The reason why I do this is because I want to make sure I have enough time to get as many shots as I can of the venue and things like that. As much footage as I can so I capture this. But then a lot of these photographers, they have eight hour coverage, 10 hour coverage. And of course, they got to try to get as much shots as they can, those eight hours, 10 hours. And you know, they run past their time into my time. And then I don't really get a chance to do my own cinematic stuff, which is unfair. And it's kind of selfish because I understand they're trying to do the job. Trying, I understand they're trying to get their shots, but so am I. And we have to work together. And I just think it's kind of not cool that you know the couple and they had set a time for me to do my shots, and I don't even get it because the photographer couldn't get their shots in in the amount of time that they allotted for themselves. Um, but you know, none of this. I've never let any of this cause an issue with my relationships with the photographers and I've never let this cause any issues with the final product I produce because a wedding day is always a beautiful day and if I can't get cinematic stage shots I try really hard to get as much cinematic candid shots as possible which means every other shot that's not staged that happens naturally I try to capture it as like cinematic as possible with movement different angles and things of that nature and i think you know i've been able to accomplish that um pretty well and i you know obviously i have room for improvement like everyone should know that they have room for improvement that's why we keep doing this and we keep practicing and we keep trying to get better at our craft um but you know i never let that hinder my product um and one of my other huge pet peeves is guests with their iPhones, their Androids, their personal cameras, their GoPros, their iPads, their laptop, whatever it is they have to take a photo or video, I've seen it. And it's fine for, you know, because look, we live in an you know, age of technology. I don't believe in necessarily making it like an unplugged wedding. People can have their cameras out. People can have their, whatever it is they use to record uh, video or, or photos out you know, as a guest do whatever you want don't get in the way of the professionals don't get in the way of someone who's getting paid to do to deliver like the most high quality work because I've had it so many times when you know Uncle Yang or, or Uncle Kim Lee 
you know, with his GoPro or his dang massive iPad, just like, or camcorder or whatever, and just roll up right in front of me as I'm trying to get this shot. And it's cool and all. I mean, look, don't get me wrong. Bring whatever you want to capture it the way you want. Two rules, just make sure you don't get in the professional's way. And two, do not just save that video or photo for yourself. Like a lot of these people, I see them with all their cameras, they have to have their camera, they have to capture it, and they probably just Snapchat or something. Like I don't know, like I never, you know, I'm friends with some of these people and I never see them post any of these photos up or videos up. So why, why are you taking the video and nothing's ever shared? Like I never see it. Um, it makes no sense to me, but you know, just, do whatever you want, just don't get in the pros way. That's all. Well, I've arrived at the venue and the clients are already waiting, so I'm gonna head out and uh, do this walkthrough and hopefully I don't get Hopefully I don't get bored to death or something. I finished that little event there. It wasn't too bad. Um, went over some ground rules and things of that nature. Um, you know, don't scratch their floors and things like that with my tripod, which is fine. It's been, uh, it's good to catch up with everything about with the photographer and all the vendors. Talk to the DJ, make sure I have my audio um, output to get good clean audio during vows and speeches whenever they're there so looks like it's gonna be a good day it's gonna be a good long day that weekend for this particular wedding i'm gonna actually have a wedding the next day so i'm have i have two that that weekend saturday and sunday and that's it's gonna be rough but you know i've done it before and i i can do it again it's just it's gonna be tiring but god deliver you know Anyway, um, I'm going to start driving home now, and uh, I'm not going to talk, so I'll close it out later. Man, see, the ambulance messed up. <laughs> Craziness. It's really not my problem, though. I hope they're okay, whoever was on the ambulance. Well, this, this explains all the dang traffic action. The dang light's not working, so they got a cop at the intersection directing traffic. And of course, all the problem is no one can follow directions, so it's causing like this hang up. It's typical for this area. See? He's mad. He's like, come on. He's yelling at him. Not happy. Not happy one bit. better with these vlogs and just tune in subscribe give me a like whatever it is i really appreciate it and uh until next time <laughs>